from the uh, bylaw amendments that we saw at the AGM. There were four specific recommendations. So in the first recommendation um, that was brought forward from the Governance Committee to look at the composition of the board, um, the board had struggled with that. That's in terms of moving the directors to a smaller number. And so the board of directors sent that back to the Governance Committee and said, we're not prepared yet to go forward with that because we're concerned about what was said at those meetings, what we've heard from directors, and we don't want to go back twice and now a third time and not really be sure what the members are thinking. So we, we went back and said we want a strategy, perhaps we want a survey, we really want to understand what the members are thinking on that going forward. So on the issue of appointment of directors, um, the board felt that bringing that back to the AGM was something that was fairly non-contentious. So we did vote um, to put that forward towards the next the AGM. We also looked at the electronic voting bylaw change and we thought definitely that was something that needed to come forward again. All, a lot of different organizations use that for efficiency of members' time. And then finally, the corporate affiliate members. We also want to now add new members for the Commercial Edge service, which would allow us to tap into appraisal communities, allow us to tap into cities and other people that would need that service. There's a lot of directors that you might be working with for a year and you really don't know their background of the last 15 to 20 years of their careers. What have they done? What skills do they bring to the table? So we want to be more conscious of that. So we're going through a self-assessment. Um, and the Governance Committee, working with the Board Development Committee, are trying to fill some of those gaps. Um, they're filling gaps with educational recommendations. They're filling gaps with um, trying to understand more of our membership. We're trying to reach out to the members through the Board Development Committee and find out what kind of skills they have. But more than that, it's not just about our board. We're trying to expand the Board Development Committee's mandate to include other organizations that we touch, which includes BCREA, our council, CREA. Into the future, it might be the City of Vancouver's planning committees, where we as realtors can affect other organizations and affect change. The mandate of the Human Resources Committee looks at how are the senior management um, and the senior managerial policies around human resources affecting the strategy and the specific projects of the board. How is the workload on those senior managers? How much time are they spending in, with other organizational mandates in the different committees that they're a part of? Given the current projects that we have with the CRM project, our sing single MLS, do our current managers need additional resources that need to be budgeted for next year? Those are the types of questions that we talk about so that you have A, no breakdowns in services and value, and B, you're able to be adaptive in what we want to do going forward. There was a data sheet put forward for the board's consideration done by the commercial division. And a part of that addressed the need to change the way that we're dealing with commercial services to make it more adaptive to the actual business of commercial real estate they came back to us and said, look, it's not possible for us in some areas to follow the rules of cooperation, for example. A specific example would be, um, in order for us to show a 40-unit apartment building, I need to open up all 40 units every time I show it and give notice to 40 tenants. Well, obviously, that's not going, that's not practical, but it's also not uncooperative. So we need to look at regional models for uh, commercial services and we need to involve other boards. We might even need to involve other provinces in order to make it um, significant and viable. And for that reason, the board is going to undertake that research piece to find out where we're going to go into the future to make it better for commercial practitioners. Can we get, or is there an appetite at the board for um, outside advisors to be present during our board meetings but not as directors and to not have any vote? And I think the biggest reason for that is, is that when the board considered the question, if we were going to reorganize real estate today, would it be the exact same? And every single board of director, not only at our organization, but others have said, there's no way we would organize it this way. And so the board looked at that and said, indeed, we really need that. Those types of entities that will come in and look at, or hopefully look at the organization and go, why are you doing this? Explain this to me specifically. Why is this a good idea that would question the things that we've been doing for a long time in order for us to really stand behind it and say, is this a good idea or we really don't know why we're doing it. We really should be reframing it. 
uh, not-for-profits are being looked at by CRA in terms of their various revenue centers, MLS, education. And so there's a number of tests that CRA does to either challenge or to approve a not-for-profit status. So we're conscious that we are staying on the right side of the fence. And we'll report back to the board and back to the audit committee on that risk assessment. <music>